um, how how do we deliver value? Two ways, you know, we we coach our clients through coaching journeys and we meet them weekly. But also we deliver products that are very tangible, like the CV, the LinkedIn, the content, the articles. Um, we host them in our LinkedIn live talks. We interview, prepare, negotiate salary. So these are products that we deliver during the coaching sessions, but not only. Um, Hello, Empower Nation. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan, speaker, best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, where we talk all things money and business. Today's episode is sponsored by freemoneytipsbook.com. Freemoneytipsbook.com. Head over to that website and get your free ebook on seven unshakable tips to get your financial journey started. Today's episode, I am interviewing Rebecca with Talent Factory, and she's going to talk about international networking. Check it out. Hello, Empower Nation. Welcome to Empower Her Money podcast. I have Rebecca on the show today. Welcome. Thank you, Angela. It's a pleasure to be here today. Awesome. So Rebecca, tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get to do what you're doing today? Well, um, it all started when I started to follow my spouse. At the time, he would move country and I would move along. And I started to think about a career that I could carry with me. And, um, and one of the things I had done quite well was re reinvent myself. Every country I had to find something new to do and keep myself busy. And so um, I, I really had... A great grasp on how to redo my CV and my LinkedIn and, and figure out my new brand. So then I started to do that for friends and run workshops at home and teach them. And it got serious. And then um, I started selling, you know, CVs for $24, I think it was 25. I don't know, but it was really cheap. And then now, you know, I sell coaching journeys and, you know, the cheapest one is like to almost 3000. So yeah, so it's it's awesome because but it took a lot of time. So this was back in 2015. Um and I also have a son who has Asperger's and so it's a form of autism. So I needed to be super close to home and that was my way of being home and working, you know, in the shift that I had to be, you know, with my clients, with my son working from home way before COVID. Yeah. That's awesome. So um, before we dive into the business side, I'm curious to know what countries have you lived in since you said you moved around a little bit? Yeah. Um, so I grew up a little bit all over the place. You know, I'm Brazilian, but my parents were in Switzerland when I was little. First Algeria and then Switzerland, then back to Brazil. And then I came back to Switzerland on my own and and I studied here. Then I met my ex-husband. He's Hungarian. And I moved to be with him in London. Then we moved to South Korea. My baby was born there. And then a little bit in Hungary, then San Francisco, <laughs> and then finally back to Switzerland. Gotcha. Yeah, I saw the San Francisco sign behind you. That's where yeah, I was. Yeah, the picture I took there. there. Yeah, so that's awesome. So you moved around a lot and you were trying to figure out how do I reinvent myself each place that you go? And then you kind of stumbled upon a talent because you started studying, you know, online and LinkedIn. And then when people ask you, help me, that's kind of where you figure out, you know, hey, I might be good at this and I might start a career. Yeah. So in the early days, when you first started that, um, talk a little bit about more, you know, how did you market yourself or what were you offering as your services when you first got started? So um, I realized uh, the beginning of my career, I, I was in the nonprofit. I was at the UN and I thought, you know, I really wanted to go and help people in Africa. It was a bit innocent of me to think that I could raise a family, you know, like that, because then you you start to to make choices that will 
benefit your 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 family, your kids, your spouse. As a woman, we tend to sacrifice fast, easy, <laughs> and then your career takes takes um, the back seat. I would say my my um the beginning was really networking because I would go to all these networking events with other spouses and figure out a way to help them stay competitive, relevant, um, because it can be isolating when you're away from home. Um, we call them expats or trailing spouses. They are on expat assignments and sometimes it can be up to four years, but it's at, you know two to three years and they change to a different country. And I, I focused on that population first because that was my my case right and um and I put and I picked HR because HR is something that is transferable right so project management product development uh data analysis some jobs really fit everywhere every industry and I thought I'll pick HR and so first I started from the recruitment um standpoint and then I went to outplacement it got really solid during COVID when recruitment went down and then people needed to find jobs. And then outplacement was my my main focus. Gotcha. And so we fast forward to today. Talk a little bit more about how you help your clients. I know um, your slogan is turning odds into your favor. So what does that mean and what do you do for your clients? Well, we're basically networking so you don't have to. <laughs> we we do that for many other uh, audiences, not just trailing spouses. So we started there, but now we work with people who are in different industries, but mostly director, senior director, VPs, and they have complex careers they want to preserve and protect. And we are their insurance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we brand them, we, we write content on their behalf, their CVs, we help them through selection processes um, and we build communities so that they can quickly network and, and be matched with people that are like-minded. Very nice. So you're kind of doing their networking for them so they don't have to spend the time to because yeah. maybe they're, they're busy or they don't enjoy yeah. that aspect, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big networker, so I understand that it can be time consuming to get out there to meet people and then to kind of weed through people that are more like minded like you so that yeah. you can, you know, advance your career or just brainstorm together so that that's really good and you've, you've kind of picked like a niche market that you've targeted so you're taking your talents. And then you're applying it to a niche market that, you know, could really use your talents and, and hopefully save them some time too. So that's awesome. Um, so this is a podcast about money. Um, so being that you are kind of, uh, you know, you can take your, what you do in your career and your business, and you can do it from just about anywhere. Um, talk about a little bit of the money side of things. What are some things that you kind of focus on when you're paying attention to your business? Um, you know, is it programs that you're doing? Is it training that you do? You know, what is it that you help your your business grow as well? So we're mostly B2C, um, which makes for a more dynamic, you know, trade, I guess. <laughs> but then you have more volume, right? You have to. Um, how how do we deliver value? Two ways. You know, we we coach our clients through coaching journeys and we meet them weekly. But also we deliver products that are very tangible, like the CV, the LinkedIn, the content, the articles. Um, we host them in our LinkedIn live talks. We interview, prepare, negotiate salary. So these are products that we deliver during the coaching sessions, but not only. Um, and like I said, there's also the community aspect. So there are some uh, hubs and partnerships that we establish with them for them. And all of that creates a journey that they navigate um, during two to six months with us. Gotcha. And for the audience that doesn't know what a CV is, can you just explain that? That's oh, the resume. Easter. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The resume. Um, well, you know, it's about what you've done in your career. We also have built um, like a sort of portfolio for some of our clients who are really special <laughs> in what they do. And um, and so it's it's more like a like a pitch about 
who I am, what are my values, motivations, what are my skills, and also my strengths and weaknesses, um, and my drivers, you know, what's my tagline? We put this all into like a nice packaged uh, sort of PowerPoint, and and that's something they share if they want to be on boards, if they want to be mentors. So it's not it's not just for a nine to five. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not just a piece of paper that you turn in as a resume. It's a yeah. whole package that you help present, you know, which is yeah. awesome because then you get to know more of the person, what their drivers are, their personality, you know, what their accomplishes um, are. And that's very difficult to pull out of just a basic resume. So I yeah, like exactly. explain that a little bit more because not a lot of people understand what that is. So I appreciate that. So what's what's in the future for you? How do you grow your business from here? What do you what do you see five years from now for Rebecca? I think it's the B2B aspect that we have to develop. And we've started with personality assessments with Principles U. And that's, I think, one thing that has been, yeah, it's it's a great tool. I, I totally recommend it. And I think it helps understand who you're dealing with. So self-awareness for the person who's being assessed, but also for me, I quickly get a, a very deep scan of who I'm dealing with and that helps enormously so I want to explore that further Mm -hmm. and then um I I like to 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 create content for people and sort of impersonate their voices whether we're doing that for their resume or for their LinkedIn but now we're also partnering with uh, Forbes for example and helping uh, people have a voice and have a face and have you know content that will be um, helping them grow. Hmm. Do you see AI technology kind of coming into play to help you get to that next level too? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 I'm still nervous about I can't YouTube. live without it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that definitely helping in, in your line of work, in your field to be able to create that, you know, um, that voice and that personality as well. So awesome. Any last tips that you want to give to the audience as far as like running a mobile business, you know, being obviously being able to reach different people in different countries and different cultures, what other advice would you tell people who might be thinking about starting a similar business to yours? I would say there's a lot of free work that's done up front. So don't, don't let that stop you Mm -hmm. because you need to build your brand first and nobody's going to pay you for that, you know? So, but then eventually if you do it well with your brand, you can do it for others. So the first thing I do when I partner with people is I, especially if they are in social media or in marketing or branding, I'm going to look at what they're doing with their own name. Um, You know, like if they're, if they're telling me they're going to help me grow my, I don't know, YouTube channel, then I'm going to look at theirs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. You, know, so you have to be mindful of these things. And um, that's, that's a lot of investment that you, but you're investing in yourself. So Mm -hmm. there's no better place. There's nothing more worthy. Right. So do it, do it. Rebecca, I have a fun question for you. Um, If you could have a superpower, what would you pick and why would you pick that power? Oh God. Um, I think to read minds. (laughs) (laughs) That's good because then you could draw out all the information and be able to put it together in a package for people. And, yeah, it would save time. <laughs> yes, yeah, I love that. Awesome, Rebecca. So, if our audience wants to get in touch with you, learn more about your services, learn more about you, how do they reach you? Well, I'm really active on LinkedIn, but I'm on all the other platforms as well, uh, except for TikTok. I haven't yet done that, but um, I'm really curious about Twitter, by the way, with all the changes that it's going through so so yeah reach out to me on linkedin um i can also leave my email below and you can um but on my web page there's everything you can get into my calendar through my web page you can yeah schedule time and uh, we can discuss do you want to t- tell us uh, the web page for the yeah audience? sorry <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you that talentfactory.coach awesome thank you so much rebecca for your time today thank you angela it was great to meet you thanks Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Empower Her Money podcast. Make sure you leave me a five-star review, share this podcast, subscribe, and share the message.